sometimes when you're making outbound calls, and I've been listening, we have some people on the call right now that do a lot, and they have ISAs um, that do a lot of outbound calls. If you have a difficult name or an unusual name, that can work for you because it might be easier to remember. However, what I'm not I'm not very good with language. I'm not comfortable with different names because I just maybe I don't hear it right. And the message that I'm giving you free before we start is sometimes it's the first you got to win in the first minute when you make outbound calls. Sometimes you got to win in the first thirty seconds. So even my name is pretty normal for uh, United States, Denny. However, I'll say oh, John. Hey, you coming? Okay. Uh, I'll say, um, I may say, you know, like the restaurant, eggs anytime. So um, that, that's why I'm saying nicknames sometimes can be good. So it is one o'clock. We're getting ready to start. Thank you so much for being on here on the Mastery Roleplay. Our, my co-host is coming in and I'm going to find him here in just a second and make him co-host. I see you, Sherry. I have got so many Sherry's. Let's let's make a goal, John. That this sometime this year we fix that sherry thing. Ryan, do you have anybody from your team here today? And uh, I'm. I'm uh, it looks like I have a couple. I see him starting to come on. I see two so far. John, I'm attempting to make you go. Sorry, just bear with me one second. I don't see you here. Who are you looking for? Uh, do you have co-host? Do you have co-host access yet? Uh, let's see. I do not. All right. And I don't even see you come. Let's see if I can do this. One second, gang. Make co-host. Here we go. There you go. Your co-host now. You're in charge of that. Sweet. There you go. It worked. There we go. Well, awesome. It's Friday. You know what the Friday is. It's going to do mastery level role play. And if you do want to participate in our fun and frolic, which I do think it's fun, uh, go ahead and raise your digital hand. John's monitoring that. Also monitoring the chat. We want to make this hour all about you. And I did. I do uh, have, in fact, let me just go to that slide here real quick. There is an ongoing role play that Keller Williams started. You don't have to be part of Keller Williams to do it. John and I are co-hosts on this. This is a daily role play. It, we have 30 minutes every day. It's basically 8.30 to 9 central time. And you do the math wherever you are. And you can put that into your calendar. Your teams can uh, participate in this if you want. And we're building up a following. We're attempting to do what we're doing an hour on Friday, 30 minutes a day. And it's kind of like a... 30 minutes a day, shot in the arm. However, <clears throat> this is what Daddy, I, I got some good news for you. What's it? Well, what's the good news? Tanner's here and his hand's already raised. Well, I think he came out of utero with his hand up, okay? I just think he <laughs> likes to participate. So here is, let, I always start, and I don't know that I'll do it on Fridays all the time. However, we got a tradition to start recon with the importance of February 3rd. And, and I always tie it into real estate. So how many people know that today is National Carrot Cake Day? Now, uh, I, don't, I like carrot cake. My wife doesn't like carrot cake. However, here's what's significant about that. They say, I don't know if it's true or not, that carrots help your eyes, help give your eyesight because rabbits like to eat carrots. They can see really good. Well, that ties into what we do because this practice and role play is going to give you guys a tremendous vision, insight into your client's situation so you can handle their concerns and objections better give them better service so your business becomes a piece of cake anyway that's a stretch that was fun that's the importance of today it won't hurt you guys to smile a little bit and you know what we do we do question based so there's a lot of different styles if you're new to the new to the to the show here what we do is we want to handle objections and we don't make statements we ask questions because there's a whole lot of power in that and we follow a model. This is basically, and I'll show you a, a, a QR code. I've got a couple things I'm gonna share with you. I've got over a year's worth, or we have a year's worth of videos. If you wanna take a snapshot of that, take us to our, your YouTube channel, subscribe if you want. And if you know anyone that's really good, I'm looking for someone to take these videos, which are an hour long, chop them up into little bite-sized 10 or 15 minute segments. 
and repost them so they're a little bit easier to consume. So you can email me at um, Danny at DannyGrimes.com if you want to, if you have any contacts for that. That's that. I do have a thought of the day, John, so get ready. I'll give this and get ready to go ahead and get some people in our little cage matches. Here's my thought of the day. Let's see how this works. How many people have golf clubs somewhere in your home? And if you're not a golfer, you may have a tennis racket or if it's really big nowadays, pick a ball. How many people have something like that somewhere in your basement garage or in your trunk, right? You probably do. And you probably know people who do. My question is, how much money are you making? How much money are your friends making? They have all the right equipment, yet they're not making a professional income, right? So I say that because you totally understand that is, whoops, how many people have piles of notes and quote scripts, et cetera, and they're just like the golf clubs in your trunk. You're not making a professional income from them. And why do you think that is, you guys? Why? You can come off mute. Just tell me why. Because they're not being used. They're not being used. And uh, basically, if you want to be a professional golfer and make money at golf, for example, you got to spend hours on the range. If you want to be a professional real estate agent and have a professional income, we have to increase our practice. I know I'm preaching to the choir, guys, because you're on here. However, this isn't enough. The 30 minutes a day isn't enough. It will help you. It will help you get ahead of your competition. However, I believe early on, especially early on, you should be hooking up with a partner or a coach or someone in your office. And if you have a team, you could get your team members together. I think you should have two hours minimum of practice a day. What's your spin on that? What's your take on that, John? I agree 100% with that, Denny. <clears throat> you know, it's interesting. I know you practice two to three hours a day right now. <clears throat> and I have a question for you. How many listing appointments have you gone on in the past 30 days? Really? Zero. Seriously, I know the answer, but <clears throat> zero. <clears throat> many people out I, here I don't know. I'm, I have a team for that. It's called seventh level. I'm in production, so I haven't been on any. Right, but you still practice two to three hours a day. Tony yes. DeCello, who is widely regarded as the most prolific listing agent of all time, practiced his listing presentation every day, a minimum of one hour. His listing presentation. Michael Jordan practiced foul shots, free throws, Three pointers, hours before and hours after practice started and ended. That's what it takes. And I say in the bold room all the time. So get ready. We'll have our first objection, John. Here's my last comment before we get into the cage match. We do not create business in real estate, guys. We harvest it, and it's kind of those that are the strongest, quickest, start earliest are going to get more than their fair share. And so my encouragement to you, thanks for being on. See if you can't up your game a little bit by practicing. So how many hands do we have up besides Tanner? Right now, it's just Tanner. We just need so. Oh, there we go. Alex and Alejandro. All awesome. Right. All right. Well, here we go. Uh, so you can either, uh, Tanner, you can, you, can, you can say, this is what I want, or you can take potluck. What do you want? I'll take the potluck. <laughs> okay. So this will be a review from last week. And this is a seller. See what we've learned from last week. I'm going to have the timer. Seller conversation. I want to wait for interest rates to go down. And uh, John, would you like to be the seller? Sure, I'll be the seller on that one. That's a fun one. Okay, let me get my little timer here. And for you guys that know, there's the, there is a model right there. Acknowledge, isolate, clarify, address, and close. You may want to write that down. John might put in the chat, although he might be a little bit busy. Round one. Are you ready, Tanner? Yes, I am. All right, here we go. Four minutes. Go. All right, John. Thank you for sharing that. I understand you like to wait for the interest rates to come down. Other than that, uh, what else? Is there anything else stopping you from moving? Nope, that's it. 
just the interest rates. Just the interest rates. And just to be clear, like, what was the reason you wanted to move at the first place? Oh, you know, I'd, I'd like to get something a little more land, but my interest rate right now is 2.7. Okay, 2.7 interest rates. And currently right now, you, the house you leave, you're saying that it's not as big as you need? Is, is that what it is? I'd like more land. More land. Yep. And, I've got a couple the, rambunctious dogs and they need a place to run. Okay, makes sense. And have you seen anything you like? Like, have you seen anything that you would have moved if you really could? Oh, yeah. Yeah, that finding the right place is not a problem. It's just that, you know, the interest rates now at 6%, my payment's going to go up even for the, a lateral move. My payment's going to go up, you know, $1,500, $2,000 a month. And currently, you, you're paying a mortgage or, like, it's paid up? What, what is it currently? Oh, you know, I've got a mortgage. And how much is it? How much is the payment? Yes. 2500 So you think that you, you'll be paying $4,000, like $1,500 difference. Is, that, is that what that's what the new payment would be, yeah. So $4,000, okay. I, I mean, mean, prices have gone up. So, you know, great. I've got equity. I still have to move it over. And, and why would I Why would I have a 2 If I got a 2.75% loan, why would I go get a 6% loan? It doesn't make any sense to me. I totally understand and I agree with you, John. Now, oh, Lord, don't say I agree. <laughs> Thank you. Uh, uh, I understand, John. Now, uh, and do you need to sell this home to purchase the next one? Yeah, I can't afford two mortgages. Okay. And now, with the sale of this home, if if you know if you found you know if you find a home that's within your what is your maximum budget? By the way, let, let me just ask you that before. If you don't mind. What My maximum budget? Yes. A uh, four hundred fifty thousand dollar loan. And payment one payment wise, how, how much? Like, what would be the maximum? Three thousand. Three thousand. So, so what we're looking here is like a thousand dollar difference, correct? Yep. And John, now, if we find a home that really has everything that you're looking for, and it's just like stretches a little more than three thousand dollars would you be comfortable with that what, what's a little more i don't know you know we, we will sit down we'll look for but obviously you're looking for a bigger home right it might be a little more expensive we don't know you know we're gonna look at look at it so now i look at a home that's more expensive and interest rates are higher that's not making me very comfortable i understand it's friday folks <laughs> Okay, uh, Danny, I'm sorry. I like myself again. I took myself to a different path. You could stop right. it. <laughs> I'll stop. All right, so... Um... Hey, Danny, before you get into it, first of all, let me say, Tanner, good job. It, it's not easy, A, being the first one up, and B, dealing with a Friday like this. So good job. Thanks. Here's, here's where I'm going on this. Okay, so where do you think you got lost? I mean, I, I kept pedaling at that payment stuff. You know, I, I just couldn't move to the next stage. You know. Well, okay. I, I I thought you got off his major concern, and you were talking about if we can find the right house. That kind of a question doesn't address his issue. I here so. Well, John, I'll tell you in a second where he was going. But here's my blink on it. So you got him down to uh, basically he wanted to go up to three thousand, and and his new monthly investment would be four thousand, right? So it's a thousand dollar difference. Do we know why he? Do we know really the why he wants to move? He wants to move for a bigger land so his dogs can play. Do we? Do you have any emotional connection to that at all? Mm -hmm. Do you? No. Remember, the, the the reason is not the emotion. So, you know, so we need a little bit more, some more leverage with him. And that would be something, and John will explain it here in a second. The other question is, and I want everyone to write this down, when people are having a number issue, at least John, John gave him a little tidbit and gave him the numbers. Most of the time, people are talking about the rates. And I've said this before. Uh, That's why I'm reviewing it. Don't deal with rate, deal with real numbers. They're monthly investment, not payment. 
Now you notice that I corrected Tanner when he when he acknowledged it. He said, I understand. And then he went too far by saying, I agree with that. Now you don't want to be on that side. That's getting sympathetic, not empathetic, right? So there's a thousand dollars difference. This is the question I want everyone to write down. When there is that spread, find out is it an affordability issue for you, John, or is it a just I don't want to do it issue, John? And what would you have said there, John? So that's is my mic on now. There we go. Yeah, okay. You're on. <clears throat> Being red, green, colorblind, I can't tell whether my light's telling me I'm on or not. So Tanner, the way that uh, there's a couple things that you could have done to dig a little bit deeper on that. Why is it important for your dogs to have room to, to run? And then the answer to that question will be, well, listen, Sky, who's our, our red bone coonhound, uh, tends to escape out the back door and is gone for 45 minutes to an hour. We can't catch her because she just loves to run through the woods. By the way, this is a real story, guys. So it's, <clears throat> I would love to have extra land for her because she just takes off chasing rabbits, chasing coyotes, chasing bears, whatever it is we have running around Naples, she chases it. <clears throat> so you have to dig deeper. Remember five questions when you think you're onto something, go five questions deep, all right? Uh, another thing to polish up a little bit, Tanner, is you still ask a lot of yes, no questions. Okay. Rephrase it to create the conversation. And it would be something simple like this. Instead of saying, oh, so I understand you want more land so your dogs can have freedom, right? Yes. Awesome. Nobody learned anything there. <clears throat> As opposed to what would having more land do for you and your dogs? Now I have to tell a story. And when I'm telling a story, you're starting to get the emotion that I'm feeling. And when you can receive that emotion, you are much better equipped to continue the conversation down the road. Does that make sense? Absolutely. Thank you, John. Thank you for the feedback. I appreciate it. Awesome. Good job. Good job with the model. I'm going to reset this. And um, who's next, John? Next. <laughs> Excuse me. Next is Jesse. Jesse. So do you want to, do you have a particular uh, objection or do you want hot luck? <clears throat> I have right now, I'm working with expireds and my two that I'm getting are, what are you going to do differently that will get my house or home oh. sold? Mm -hmm. And then the other one is where were you when my home was listed? Yeah. All right. Is God, there, I love that, those. I love yeah. those. Do you want to be the uh, expired listing or do you want to be the agent? I'll be the expired um, listing. All right. So we have some experienced people on here. I know we've got Mark. We've got Ryan. Uh, let's get some participation from some of you guys that work expired. And um, who would like to step up for a four-minute role play? You can be the agent. This is going to be, I assume, on the phone. Yes. Hey, Coach, I can do that expired call. Yep. I got two Ryan Lowry's up here. I know the... Uh, Will the real Ryan Lowry please step? Ryan, do you want to do that? You want to be the agent? I, I think, did, Jay, was that you or, that said that? Or did Jay raise your hand? Okay, I, I perfect. Jay, the, you got it. I can be the agent. The only thing I'm in, at a noisy place, so hopefully you guys can listen to me correct, correct, nicely. That'd be awesome, Jay. I'm starting the timer right now. This is a conversation on the phone. Pick it up from whatever objection you want to start with. Okay. Hey, Jesse. Nice uh, meeting you today. And... Uh, it's on the phone. Sorry, Jesse. Uh, my name is Jay Mehta. I'm a local realtor. And uh, I told you I'm confident I can sell your house. I'd like to meet you exactly for 20 minutes to uh, discuss what we do things differently in today's market. Now, Jesse, uh, uh, it will just take me about 20 minutes to show you how I can benefit you financially with my active marketing. Uh, did you see the three homes sold in the neighborhood already? Um, yeah, I saw the homes sold. Uh, the, my, my, I sold these three homes on Quito Lane, El Camino, and uh, the one on uh, Lincoln Street. So all I'm requesting is let's get together for 20 minutes so I can uh, go through my detailed plan. And uh, that way we know exactly how we could get the homes sold. Uh, what time works for you, 3 p.m. or 4 p.m. tonight? Um, I'd rather just save the trouble. And, you know, I just if you could just tell me up front right now, what are you going to do differently? 
Uh, well, uh, Jesse, uh, there are a lot of things that I do differently. Uh, first and foremost, I told you, you already sold three homes in your neighborhood. Uh, you, uh, do you know a little bit about how, how active and passive marketing work in real estate? No. Okay. My, my team is active, aggressive marketing, which not only does the 4P, meaning putting the home on the website, uh, putting a yard in the front sign, and uh, also you know just uh, hoping and praying people would come in versus being proactively reaching out to those buyers. You know, those three homes which we sold, they're already just three lucky buyers, but we still have a list of other people who desire this neighborhood and we'll market your home to these guys who did not get the property, but still made offers. So that way we don't lose any time. Would, uh, would 3 p.m. work for you, Jesse? I can show you the more numbers and details and go through my exact plan so you're confident and comfortable, just like I am to get the home sold. Some of these guys I talk to, they're really mean. So I don't know if I should keep dishing out what they're telling me. You're, You're not going to learn unless you, you can't be a lay down. Well, um, all right. So uh, where were you when my, my home was listed? Oh, Jesse, great question. Where was I when your home was listed? You know, I, I told you, uh, when we take a listing, we make sure that we get a buyer for a listing. We are more than 100% committed for that. We took three listings in your neighborhood, sold three of them. And uh, we didn't even know your home was for sale. Don't get me wrong. I want to make sure, you know, when we take your listing, we do everything in our power to get the home sold. In fact, I'd like to uh, in fact, invite you to my office every day from 8.30 to noon. I am on the phone calling those buyers and sellers just like I called you. Would you like to be in the market for three more months or would you like to get the home sold just like your neighbors? I'd love to get the home sold, but I've had several of the calls today of you know, people saying the exact same thing. And again, you know, what is it that you're going to do differently? I haven't heard anything different. Well, I mean, first and foremost, I told you, we already sold three homes in your neighborhood. That's number one proof. Uh, we, I just want to make sure that you understand you know, this is a market where we just cannot sit passively and wait for things to happen. We have a database of customers. We work with our plus fans. We get your home exposed to the maximum amount of people out there. I mean, I saw your home on the website, which looks lovely, but you did not have a description on the schools. Now, you, your kids go to these local schools, right? Rolling Hills, Marshall Lane, and Westmont High? Uh, yes. Okay. So, I mean, uh, just we would like to get uh, show you how we make a, a excellent presence on the web for people to come in and fall in love with your property. Uh, that's what we do differently. We want to make sure I live not too far from your home out here and my kids go to this local school that none of it is mentioned on your website, on your MLS description. I can show you a couple of more things. I don't want to talk down about your realtor, but I just want to let you know that there's so much we can do much more than what has been done. Already. Time. Top dollars. Time. All right. How do you do? How'd you do there? Oh, where'd you go? I lost you. Sorry, coach. I was talking a lot. I should have asked more questions. <laughs> All right. Well, uh, Jesse, uh, you were you were the. How did you do on those objections? You were the expired. Um, I I've used the the four Ps before, and uh, that didn't go too well for me. Um, you know, the whole prospecting thing. I've I've tried that route as well, and they weren't responsive with that. They said, "Listen, you know." Our last agent said they were going to work just as hard calling a bunch of people. They said they were going to door knock and do all these things. And I saw that they did some of those things, but I don't know to what extent. So again, I'm not really sure what you're going to do differently or how much time you're going to dedicate to my house. So, you know, I'm just kind of running into a wall. And right now, a lot of these are pretty much these top two questions that I kind of feel like I don't really have a strategy or what to say exactly to rebuttal or to get into the door. Got it. Couple things. Let me let me give. Uh, who was doing the uh, the role play? Who was that? Uh, where are you? Who was doing the talk? Oh, Jay. Jay, do you make do you make outbound calls like that? I do, sir. Yes. Okay. Well, until I can tell that you're comfortable doing it. Are, are, is it okay if I give you some coaching? Please, please. W one of the things there's there's mirroring and matching. So you guys, does Jay talk fast? I do. Was Jesse talking fast? So you might want to match, mirror and match the person you're talking to because you're coming across very fast. Then of course you can't, you have an accent which makes it a little bit more difficult to hear, to understand, at least for my ears. And so you may want to slow down a little bit. 
the other thing is, um, the other thing is there probably could be some more questions in there uh, rather than you, you, you started to laundry list a little bit. Like for example, what, what would be your conversation had you not sold three houses in that neighborhood? Um, you know, you went back to that a lot. So obviously you showed you've got a track record, but however, what, what if you didn't have any sales in that neighborhood, what would you have said? Well, I would have just asked for an appointment and given him just a little bit of preview so that uh, he's excited to meet me. Got it. Um, the, he, he went with the four P's, classic one, you guys. If you don't know what the four P's are, maybe somebody go through that. I'll give somebody another shot at this because uh, that's good. There's another one. Where were you when my home was, was, was listed? That's one of the top four objections you're going to get from an expired listing. And the script, script, the conversation goes something like this. Well, Jesse, you know, quite honestly, when you're when you're uh, when a listing agent has has your home, they're gonna they really have to sell it twice. Yes, they have to sell it to a buyer. They also have to sell it to the other agents. And quite frankly, and I don't want to talk down about your agent, which is kind of what um, Jay said. Your agent didn't sell it to me, and so that that is the a nutshell of handling that objection. Here's the one point I'm going to just take the 100 foot view. If a seller is having those objections, just, just think with me on this. <clears throat> I, I might try this and I don't make my living on a, uh, on expireds, although I may, may start doing it. Jesse, I'm gonna go into role play, just ask you a question. Did your agent that you, that you had that did not sell your home, did they tell you all the things they were going to do? Yes. Did they do them? I think they did. Okay, so didn't they tell you that you were, they were going to get your home sold? They did. Did Except they do that. that? They did not. So maybe maybe approach could be different because I, an agent, me or anyone else, could say whatever they wanted to say, what's going to prevent you from making the same mistake again? <clears throat> Now, is it a logical question? At some point in time, they're going to have to have, take a step of faith. The other thing is, so let me I'll let you answer the question. How will you know who the, who, who the right agent is to hire? Because you're going to have to take them at their word. How do you know you're going to make the right decision? Um, I, I honestly don't know. I, it's... So this is the other objection, Denny, is... Oh, that's the, stay and roll with me just a minute. Okay, all right, sorry. Um, I don't know. I just have to be enticed by some 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 new information I haven't heard yet from what everyone else has been telling me. I think I'm just going to have to hear something new that, uh, you know, works, um, gives me a little bit more convenience. Okay. Well, like, for example, how about this? How about if I guarantee I'll, I'll sell your house? You can guarantee to sell my house? I can. Okay, so that's that's a good start. And you know what? I'll only take a one-week listing. So if you don't think I'm doing a good job, you can fire, fire me. Okay. Is it worth a 20-minute conversation to see how I will do that? Uh, yeah, I think that's definitely worth a 20 minute conversation. Now, is that, now is, that a, is that a different approach, you guys? Now, I, again, I'm, my listing agreement is only for one week anyway. I mean, it's a, a get out of jail free after a week, right? And I can guarantee 100% of my listing sell, you guys, if my sellers listen to my advice. John, what are your thoughts? And we'll go on to somebody else. All right. So, Denny, I'm going to go back into analogy here, a dating analogy. Okay. <laughs> I wrote down a lot of the same things you did, especially laundry listing. And do you really have a list of buyers? Because guess what? Not everybody is going to have a list of buyers for that neighborhood of that house. So, ladies, I'm going to speak to you for just a second. If you go out on a first date with somebody and the person you're on that date with spends the entire evening talking about themselves, what are the chances of them getting a second date? Ibrahim's got it. He's like, zero. Okay. You spend yeah. the entire date asking questions about the person you're trying to impress. 
and getting to know them and asking great questions. What did you like about growing up in Des Moines or whatever the case is? All of a sudden, you're getting a connection with that person. What are the chances that you're going to get that second date? They're pretty darn good, aren't they? And this, this is the same thing. When you're calling an expired or for sale by owner, you are trying to get a date. From someone who's just been dumped. Precisely. From somebody who's already ticked off at the opposite sex with the same sex or whatever the case is. Okay. So you're dealing with somebody who's already annoyed. The last thing you want to do is tell them how good you are. So, <clears throat> Jesse, a great question to ask those expired listings would be, you know, tell me, had your home sold, what would you have done? Um, I mean, if it, it actually had sold, I mean, obviously it'd be a win and I can finally move to X destination. What's important to you about going there? Uh, sunny and beaches and mojitos. You know, well, big fan of mojitos myself. Then he's not going to let me use my analogy. No. Sorry about the coffee there, guys. So, um, so what do you love about the beaches, Jesse? What do you do when you're at the beach? Um, like to uh, go for a swim, a little bit of detox, get a tan. Um, you know, uh, play uh, vol sand volleyball. That's enough. That's awesome. So, by the way, guys, that's three questions deep in, into the hot point, right? Right. So I'm counting Five right is the here. magic number. So. Yep. <clears throat> if they're, if they're going to allow you, John, this is a great point. If they're going to allow you the time to do that, you're not going to get away with that on every call or certain personality styles. However, if you can do that, you notice how the, the whole tone of the conversation changed because now Jesse gets to talk about him. And you're learning some valuable lessons. So sorry to interrupt you. I was counting. I didn't know if you get to five, but I had. No, your... it's all good. That was that was three. The point is, is when you find that hot button, you're going five deep. If you don't, you will lose. All right, Jesse, was that helpful? Yes, thank you. Awesome. Thank you. Luke's up next. Hey, Luke's up. You need to unmute Luke. There you go. All right, bud, what's the, what's the objection that you're struggling with right now, or do you want Denny to pull a wild card? Pull a wild card. Let's do that. All right. I'm going to stay on rates. I'm a buyer, and uh, I'll go ahead and be the buyer. I'm going to wait. I don't want to buy right now. Um, rates are too high. And here we go. Start. I understand your concern, Denny. Um... Other than the rates being high, is, is there anything else that's kind of wanting to make you wait? I love it. There's the isolation. Oh no, I mean, I, I would, I would love to, I'd love to buy. And and what was the original reason for you wanting to buy? Was this your first time buying a home? Ooh, wait, back up. One question at a time. What was the original reason for you wanting to buy a home? Uh, well, we. We need the, we we're, we're downsizing. You know, we need we don't need this much space anymore. We'd like to have a ranch style, not a two story. Oh, I see. Okay, and and what, what's important about um, like having like a ranch style? Home? We want to travel more. We don't want the headaches of the maintenance and logging things up. You know, up and down. And I might I might have my mother in law move in, and uh, she she doesn't do stairs well. Oh, okay. Okay, that makes sense. Totally makes sense. And um, how soon was you wanting to get into a home? We're ready at any time. And we should have probably acted when the interest rates are 3%. So uh, we're going to wait till we, we get more favorable. I understand. I understand. So tell me, Denny, is, is, uh, is payment important to you? Payment amount, I should say, important to you? Well, uh, is it important to everybody? Absolutely. Uh, most people almost always, yeah. Tell me, what, what was your max payment that you would be willing to take on? Well, it's, you know, we can we can afford up to $5,000. Well, it's not a really an affordability issue, but we'd like to keep it around, you know, uh, under 5000 a month. Right. If we were to a able to 
find a smaller home that was under that amount of payment, would you want to jump on it? Well, the issue is that if we could find it at, at, at the three, I mean, under 4% is where we want to be. It's not an affordability issue. It's just like, I don't want to, I'm, I'm kicking myself because I should have bought when the interest rates are lower. So I'm going to, I want to wait for they get at least 4% or lower. Okay. Are you aware of um, how much the market has come down in, in, in like value? No. The market has come down a, consider, a considerable amount. I would say um, for Sacramento, depending on the neighborhood, um, some neighborhoods have dropped as much as 15%, which to put that into number perspective is for a $650,000 house, that's a hundred thousand down. Um, so homes are much more affordable now and, and who knows if they're going to keep going down. We really don't know the future. And, um, what would it be? How would it make you feel if the market started going back up and the interest rates didn't go down anymore? Well, you just said the market's going down though, right? As, as of right now, we've noticed um, the market uh, steadily dropping since May. Yes. Um, I did notice that January has had an uptick in sales though. And who knows the future, maybe the next two months, it could be a little bit bump in, uh, in value. We don't know the future, of course. I don't want to try to predict anything. But how well, would that how would you our, feel? Our rent is only 3000 Okay, and, and uh, would you be open to going to something more than that per month, though? How important is it to you? Uh, Denny, with seven seconds left, you give him that layup? I know, I know. <laughs> it was already in the chat. Somebody put it in the chat. So yep. uh, Ter Terry picked up on that right away. So All right. go ahead and debrief it, John. Luke, you ready for a couple things? Go for it. All right, I'll, first of all, good job on trying to put him in a point of pain. Okay, and I, I saw that technique coming in by talking about prices possibly retreating and that sort of thing. And I'm kind of kind of going backwards from the most recent to the beginning. Here's the pitfall with that. When you said that, me as a buyer, I'm like, oh, guess what? I get to wait. Prices are going down. Okay, so you you put you basically put a sinkhole in the middle of your road, and you have no idea how deep that sinkhole is. Okay. Secondly, you asked an awful lot of yes, no questions. All right. <clears throat> it's, it's crazy difficult. We did an exercise with our team this morning about speaking on a particular topic. You were given a random topic and you had to talk for 30 seconds without saying, um, no one could do it. And we practice this stuff all the time. So this is why we do this is to get better to not only sharpen a pencil, we're really trying to, to, to get a, a razor sharp sword with you guys here. So be very conscious when you ask a question that is yes or no. Um, and you started right out with it. You said, is there anything else keeping you from buying? As opposed to what else? Mm -hmm. All right. If you say, is there anything else? We are preconditioned. You walk into a store. Can I help you? No. First word you learn? No. You ask a yes, no question. You're going to get a no. Even though the answer might be yes. Okay. <clears throat> so let's keep working on replacing that vernacular and get them to think. And then the biggest trap of all, Terry picked up on it about two minutes into the call, which was, does he rent or own? That's, it's got to be out right up front, guys. That, it's gonna yes, that you're dealing with somebody. To, you want the race to come down. Excellent. I can appreciate that. Tell me, Denny, do you rent or own right now? And I purposely led you down that road, Luke, because I sounded like an owner, didn't I? Kind of, yeah. And, you know, because of my age and we're paying, and then I, I wanted to, you can't assume, and it's okay. So I want everyone to know. And write this on the on your chalkboard a hundred times. Find out if they're a tenant or a landlord, <laughs> a tenant or an owner, right? And I, I don't know if you're if you're John. Are you done, John? Do you have anything else for him? No, that was it. I had it. Thank you. One thing that I think that he did it was a really good job. John picked up on it. Is this? Right, and make sure you're talking about. Oh, it can't backfire because I was thinking as a buyer. Oh, I just keep waiting. Here, here's the issue. 
you went and you told me how home values are down about a hundred thousand dollars. And so, although you know you, you have to know how to figure it, just for example, I, I took five hundred thousand dollars at the current inter interest rate of six percent, and I went to six hundred thousand dollars is what he said at what used to be at three and a half percent. And I did it quick on my financial calculator. Anyone want to take a wild guess or what the difference in the monthly investment is? I mean, because values went down, interest rates went up. What do you think the difference is? Any guesses? Take a guess. Not less sure than a dollar a day. More or less the same. 10 a day, $300 a month. So if you have a, if, if buyers right now can literally buy a home for less, and I'm feeling emotionally like I'm kicking myself because I didn't buy at the right time. One of the ways you can combat that with a buyer that I didn't have an affordability issue. I had a will issue. I was mad. Maybe I'm mad at my wife because I wanted to move and she wouldn't let, and she wouldn't let me. I, that hurts even to say that. And she wouldn't let me, right? Then make me a winner. How do you make me a winner? Congratulations, Denny. That house that you would now have to have paid six hundred for, you can pay five hundred for, and and that basically almost mitigates the change in interest rates. So that road you started going down was awesome, Lou. Just make sure you know how to figure that out. And again, we always preach you should you should get some sort of financial calculator and be able to do that, and um, and and not always rely on a mortgage broker. Fair enough. And you guys do not need to use an HP 12C. Uh, you do not need to know how to use reverse Polish calculators in order to do it. Just download the app Easy Calculators. It will have everything you need on it, all right? That's all you need to go. Now, hey, Denny? Yep. What do you say we keep on this, this uh, topic here about renters versus buying? I, I think we're on to something here. Okay. And it'd be really interesting to continue the conversation on renter conversion. Well, take over. What do you want? Luke, you want to stay on or does someone else want to jump in? Uh, does anyone else want to jump in? If not, I can do it. Going once, going twice. All right, Luke. I got sidetracked for a moment, so I might have missed something you guys said. Sorry. All right. So, Luke, we're going we're gonna to go to rental conversions, okay? I am a renter. Okay. All right. And it, it may not take four minutes, but we've got the four minutes on the clock. The idea, just to kind of preface this, guys, you're not going to convince me to rent or buy. You need to coach me to making the right decision. And the light will go on if you do it if you do it correctly down a number of paths okay so we're at the table so luke you know what i would love to do this um i, I just don't think i can afford it i'm way more comfortable renting um I, under I understand your concern what what makes you think that or what makes you more comfortable renting uh, you know what if the if the heat or the air conditioner breaks or the roof leaks i don't have to fix it Okay. Okay. And is there anything else, or I should say, what else? What is else? There, Thank you. What else is there <laughs> that makes you comfortable about renting versus like owning our own place? Uh, you know, off the top of my head, that's the big thing. What else should I be concerned about? Uh, well, um, <laughs> threw it back on me. I'm sorry. Uh, you know, honestly, uh, I would say you should be concerned about stability when you're renting the your payment Let's pause it for just a second you're going down the right road ask me a question don't tell me you, you went down the stability road that's fantastic how can you rephrase that so you're asking me a question has your landlord increased your rent over the last couple of years? Oh my God, yeah. Each time for the past three years, it's gone up. Mm. And that, uh, that uh, how does that make you feel? It hurts, dude. Yeah. yeah it hurts. Yeah. And um, they're, they're actually allowed, here in Sacramento, they're allowed to increase uh, 6 to 9% a year. That wasn't necessary. Yeah, that, that wasn't necessary. Dang it. <laughs> I'm sorry. 
Um, shoot, I'm trying to follow the model the best. I, I feel like I'm getting distracted because I'm trying to follow the model and it, oh. I, I'm getting a little bit overstressed out. Just Luke, get clarity. You're doing great. Yeah, you're doing great. You've got the model. Just get clarity. Shoot, I'm sorry. I'm drawing a blank here. I'm so like, let's reverse it. You um, go into the renter role, okay? Okay. So, so Luke, I, I understand your rent's gone up three times in the past three years. I get it. How often do you think your mortgage payment will go up when you own? I don't know. Doesn't uh, property taxes go up every year? Maybe. They go down, maybe. Insur uh, insurance might go up. It might go down. But how about what you pay the bank every year? Your principal and interest. How much does that go up every year? I don't know. I guess. I mean, I would think it doesn't really go up, right? It's fixed, right? Yeah. So if that's fixed, how do you, how would you feel about knowing that every month your payment is the same? Ten years from now, your payment is the same. Would it really be the same ten years from now? It might go up a couple bucks because of, of taxes, but it's certainly not going to go up hundreds of dollars a month. Mm, that would make me feel great. And, and a little quick question. Um, do you have any kids? I do. I have two girls. Oh, awesome. That's, that's great. And I've got two girls myself. So how would they feel about not having to worry about whether or not you're going to need to move because rents have gone up? That would make them feel great. Yeah. How so? Tell me more. Well, that would be, you know, less stress on having to move every couple of years. Yeah. Okay. So if you had to make the choice between staying renting or owning a property, what would you, what would you honestly choose? I would choose to buy. Are, are you ready to see if we can make that happen today? Let's definitely, let's figure it out. All Is right. That helpful. That was very helpful. Thank you. you. 10 seconds left. So no. Okay. That was very pretty. However, I talk nice. You do. Wait a minute. Like me. I'm, I'm going to throw a yellow. <laughs> I'm throwing a yellow flag. You said you did not want the maintenance of owning. That was never addressed. Mm. That's what I said. Doesn't mean it was the real objection. Well, I think you forgot about it. You never brought it up again. It was never. I am. I am old, so I could have forgotten about it. So let's go. <laughs> let's go. You've got. You know, there's people out there that really don't want to own. They say that because they don't. They don't want the hassle of owning uh, because of the maintenance, right? One thing that I want to say, though, um, if, if you want to handle that, that, that's up to up to you guys. When he asked, "Don't property taxes go up?" The, the immediate answer that I had, well, yeah, I, yeah. When your home goes up in value, your taxes go up. That's kind of a good thing, isn't it? So your taxes only go up if your value goes up. That's a good. That's a good play, Dan. I totally didn't think of that. That's a good, good play. So Greg likes it. You're you're in. I I can I can shoot a three point shot. So we'll go in any direction you want. If we got we got some something else you want to play with, let's go. Uh, or we can uh, we can do whatever you want. It's Friday. You can you can, they can attempt to stump us. Anything from the floor, try to stump us. If you do, I'll enter you into the uh, drawing for tickets to Greece. All right, guys, what do we got? Growing up, we would call this stump the chump. Stump the chump. Yeah. Well, Danny. You know, I'm going to be leaving the state in about six years. Why should I buy now? Because what if the market crashes and then, like, I can't sell and I have to do a short sale? Okay, I'm going to start this. And who was that? Was that was that Jason again? No, that was Luke again. Luke. Oh, there's, yeah. Okay. For punishment, Luke. I love it. Uh, okay, so you're going to be here six years, right? Yeah, I'll definitely be out of the state in six years. I'm just afraid I'll get in the house and then be underwater when I have to leave. Is that the only, I understand, is that the only reason that, that holding you back from building equity? That's the only reason why I, I would be hesitant to buy. I'm unsure if I would have equity by the end of those six years. Okay. And how long have you been here renting so far? Under a year. Okay. Is What is the probability? that six years might turn into a time period longer. 
Very unlikely. I'm here on a contract. Okay. And you feel pretty, pretty confident it's going to be six years, right? Yep. And let's lay out a couple of different scenarios. You said you're afraid that maybe in six years, the market may go down, right? I could be underwater on the loan, yeah. How much are you putting down? Uh, probably just minimum. Okay. I guess then this is the, I'm, the, I'm going to be demonstrating, and you can use it all the time, the greater pain. Remember, the objective of having a conversation is not to get them to make a commitment. It's to make them understand what they're not seeing, and then they may decide it's best for them based on their risk tolerance that they should not buy. So let me ask you this question, uh, Jake. I'm sorry, is it Jake? Uh, Jeff, is that who I'm talking to? Luke. Luke, I'm sorry. Okay, Luke, I've moved my screen. So Luke, let me ask you, which is the greater pain? Let's assume that... Uh, if you think the market's go, going to go down, you might have you might have lost equity, um, five or ten percent, or the market goes up five or ten percent. So in one case, you might have lost equity. In the other case, basically, you're you're guaranteed not if you rent, you're not going to have any equity. Although you might be able to pick up ten or fifteen percent, or in numbers number wise, maybe twenty to fifty thousand dollars in equity. Which one of those, I did, probably didn't ask that clear enough, which one would, would be the, the greater pain that if you decided to buy that you might be down ten or $20,000 or if you decided to buy, you may be up twenty dollars to $30,000? Uh, well, it definitely would not feel good to be missing out on the equity growth for sure. Um, I just can't risk um, being in that pickle when I have to get out of the state. Okay. And is the rental you're in meeting your family's needs? Um, the rental, yeah, it, it is. It's comfortable. It's a house. You know, it's a four bedroom, two and a half bath. If there was no market risk, let's say you were going to be here longer term, what would you buy? What would you like to own if you were going to be here longer than six years? You'd probably buy something similar to what we are living in right now. All right. So where I'm going, I'm, I'm, I'm doing the what if, and he, he seems to be pretty flatlined on everything. And so I'm running out of interest really in talking to him. Then I, I might be agreeing. I might be missing something obvious. I might be agreeing if he, if he is that risk adverse, and he's happy where he is. I haven't found anything to grab a hold of yet. I'm losing interest. I, maybe you do. Maybe you should stay. So anyone, John, am I missing something? Well, let me see. Where, there we go. Now I'm on. The only thing I would have gone, Denny, is I would have, uh, and, and sorry, I'm going to go on the high C mode on you here. So Luke, over the next six years, how much will you be paying in rent over six years? Oh, shoot, I have to get my calculator out for that. How much do you pay right now per month? Uh, we pay like, uh, we pay 3000 a month. <clears throat> okay, so you pay 36000 a year. So you're going to pay $200,000 in the next six years in rent. And you're going to get none of it back. Now, if you take that same $200,000 and apply it to your property, let's say the market does crash and you need to move. Are you required to sell your home? You know, I guess I'm not. Um, I didn't really want to have a rental or anything here in this state. I, I understand. The question becomes, in an emergency, what is a tougher pill to swallow? Having a renter or giving $200,000 to someone else that you will never get back? I didn't think about it that way. So which hurts more? That would hurt very much so to, to miss out on the equity growth and only have One to do gives you an opportunity to win. The other's a guaranteed loss. Mm. All right. That's bull crap. <laughs> <laughs> He's rolling over. Numbers-minded person. So he hit me hard when he said it that way. 
Okay. Well, you, you technically could add up. And then how about the rental bumps over the next six years? And so then you're, you're worried about, you'd have to. Easy for those of you that I would put to sleep if I went down that road. Yeah. <laughs> They've been texting back and forth. Hey, give me a lady. I'll be easy on me, Luke. All right. So <laughs> nice job. That was good. All right. I'm going to do one more. Call somebody. Let's get Mark Benson up. Mark, can you talk? All right. There's been some background noise here. So you are awesome on these calls. You're generally chatting some good things. I, I trust people are watching that. You even give me some good suggestions on how to copy that. So uh, Ryan, are you there? Can you talk where you are, Ryan? Oh, he's on the phone. All right. So, all right, Mark, you want to handle an objection as the agent? Go ahead. You want, all right. What do you want? I'll handle the objection. I know. What objection? Oh, um, well, the the objection would be, we we think that if we just wait another two more weeks, there'll be a, another pool of buyers arriving. Oh, yeah, that's right. All right. And so you are the agent, right? Sure. All right, go. Uh, John, you're the, you're the buyer. I'm the buyer. Okay. Did you hear so, there's another pool of buyers coming. I thought I was a seller. Oh, you're the seller. I'm sorry. You're right. You're the seller. Go. Okay. So, and actually Mark's a seller uh, and I'm the agent. So, oh, Mark's um, so Mark, yeah, I get it. So what is it about two weeks from now you think is going to bring another pool of buyers through? I don't think that Mark, didn't you want to be the agent? This is who's on first right now. Either way, it doesn't matter. Go ahead, John. All right. Yeah, I, I think I think that the uh, the opportunities are still here, and if if we if we just give it more time, we're probably going to get more interest. Okay, okay, I I, I can appreciate that. And um, other than the the opportunity for more or the potential opportunity for more interest down the road, what else is keeping you from moving forward today? That's primarily it. I, I want to make sure that, that we get the most exposure and the most number of people that come through here with showings and open houses and the advertising that you said you're doing. And so we get the best offer we can. Love that. Love that. So, Mark, one question for you is, um, remind me, when this is over, when we're done selling your property, what are you going to be doing? Uh, we're going back up north. Okay. To our primary okay. home. Awesome. And w what's important to you about up there? Mm, just to be, just to, you know, the, we, we've, we've been here now for 15 years and, and we're, we're ready to be back closer to family. Okay. Love that. Love that. And um, two weeks down the road, two months down the road, we're having this conversation again. How are you going to feel? Yeah, I think we'll probably know in about three weeks. And if the market, if we don't have an offer in three weeks, then we'll consider lowering our price. Okay. All right. And I'm just going to kind of get out of it at this point, because if he's going to consider lowering his price in three weeks, I'm okay. Cool. Yeah. <clears throat> that, that's To me, that's a pretty easy one. Uh, unless, Mark, you need to be up north in a shorter period of time. No, but we've got plenty of time. Okay. Uh, yeah, I agree, John. That, that to me, that's so you know, great, Mark. We're going to touch base every week, and uh, in three weeks from now, let's just go ahead and make a note that we're going to drop the price. How much are we going to drop it by? You don't have to have that conversation because yeah, that's, that's, that's this, it. Is, this is a conspiracy that everyone has agreed to be nice to John today and give me the hard one. So I'm calling foul now. There's one in the chat that yes. Jesse, uh, I have another objection. I would love to sell yes. my house, but I'm worried about the war that's going on in that country and we may be going to war here soon i haven't had this one however this is like uh, outside influence so where are you jess jesse all right jesse go ahead yeah so um i'm trying to get this listing right now and that's that is their objection and <laughs> they're giving me a bunch of stuff and i'm just like you know <laughs> all right then we only got to do this fast okay yeah. hang on we'll do this so jesse so you're the seller, right? Yeah. So you have the fear there's going to be a war here soon? Yes. And what do you think that will, uh, let's just assume I've isolated. I don't have time to go through all that. that. 
Is that your only concern? Yes. Okay. If there is a war here soon, will that help or hurt your value? I think it's going to hurt my value. Then do you think we should sell maybe before the war breaks out? Um, yeah. <laughs> Denny, well, there's I, your I layup. Need... You wanted it. There it was. <laughs> yeah. Denny, it's going to help my value. <laughs> Let's go the well, opposite direction. I'll turn it over to John if it's going to help your value. You must have a bunker underground or something like that, I right? I mean, mm -hmm. is that... Wouldn't that be that? Isn't that the conversation? I mean, hey, I'd like to sell my house before the war comes too. They got that balloon. You got to watch that balloon over the country right now. That Chinese balloon. It's, it's taking hanging up by uh, Greg's neck of the woods out there in the Rockies. So, so you guys, it's two o'clock on Friday. It's almost happy hour. It is always happy hour here at Master Role Play because we had a ha an hour of happiness. We've learned something. Do you guys have any any ahas you'd like to share? Share what you've learned through this one hour that we've been together. I have an aha. Uh -huh. Go what for it, Ryan. It's just one that, that, that just keeps on coming back from our role play. Um, make sure that you ask level three questions or GPS questions and not level one yes or no's. Level Love one it. questions are like talking to a teenager. How was your day? Fine. <laughs> yeah. No, right? Level <laughs> Level two makes you think. And that's good. You made them think. Level three makes them think with emotion behind it or answer with emotion behind it. And and that's a GPS question because it's it, it makes them go a direction you want them to go. Oh, well, um, I don't think I've heard awesome, that. Awesome, Ryan. Thank you. Yeah. So, Jesse, you had your hand up. Um, I agree with uh, Ryan. I that's the uh, same thing I've learned, but I also um the asking the five questions to dig deep. Um, yeah. I really I really like that. Good. Well, thank you for being on. We are, we'll be here next Friday. And don't forget, uh, I think I have, uh, maybe don't, I can't get to it. Oh, here we go. Don't forget Recon. And that's going to be on right there if you want to join us weekdays. And then also I had, I don't know if you saw this, I do have one more QR code that is brand new. If you do not have the phishing slide that John generally puts in, you may want to take a picture. This is brand new if you want that. Uh, three outcome slide or PDF that you can use in your listening presentations. Just take a picture of that. It will download right to your phone. I trust that will work. And for the rest of you guys, thanks for being here. Mark, Jenny, thank you, you for show the, Can you show the QR code for your videos that you showed at the beginning? You all got that one? I didn't get it fast enough. That one. Thank you. Yeah. I'm so technologically savvy. Can you show the recon one, just the recon screen? Yep, here we go. Thank you, Danny. Thank you, John, everyone. Okay, Tanner. Thank you, Danny. Have a good day. All right, love you, meet it. Knuckle bump, be careful out there. Thank you. Have a great weekend. Yes, thank, you, Danny. thank you. Have a successful weekend. Thank you. I don't know how to save the chat. Slide over one second, Danny. I got to see that one more time. Which seconds. one? This one? Yep. How do we save the chat, Mark? Um, it, it's something you have to do before you set up the call or okay. in the process of creating the call. It's okay. not something that I, I think that you can do if you didn't do it prior to starting the call. However, when you go to watch the video, isn't the chat there? I don't know, but um, when you're in the call, if you, there's, well, hold on a second. Hey, Danny, if you want me to role play doing my cold calling expired, temporary off markets, canceled, call on me next week and I'll do it. I was going to do it this week, but what the other guy jumped in. But if you want me to go through that, I'm more than willing to do it. Yeah, that'd be great. That'd be great. I'd love, I love that. All right. You guys catch you later. All right. Bye.